AI is such a hot topic, which makes it perfect for an ESL lesson. Let me show you exactly how to plan it. My name is Megan. I have been teaching English in China for the past 10 years. I'm also getting my PhD in education. And let me tell you, every single textbook has a topic about technology, inventions. So why not turn that into an AI lesson to make it a little bit more interesting and a little bit more engaging? Today, I'm going to show you my entire AI lesson plan. You can copy and paste this, or you can adapt it to best fit your students. First, for a warm up, I love to get students talking right at the beginning. I don't care if it's a listening course, a speaking course, a writing course. I find that having students share their ideas, share their opinions, really gets them involved in the lesson. So as a warm up, I ask the students two questions. Number one, how do you use AI in your daily life? And number two, what are the pros and cons of AI? I explain to them that AI isn't inherently an evil thing or a bad thing. It's a tool and it can be used in the right way and it can also be used in the wrong way. So I have students discuss how they use AI in their daily life because most of them are using AI and then the positive and negative effects of that. The example I usually give is if a teacher asks you to write a paragraph about travel and as an English language learner you just ask ChatGPT or AI to write it for you, are you really learning the language and practicing the language? Probably not. So I'll give them a few minutes to discuss this with their partner. Next, I move into vocabulary. And of course, you can modify this for whatever your students need. I can leave a list of the vocabulary words that you could use in your lesson, but this is really going to change depending on the next section, which is the exercise section. Here is where I'm really using the textbook. So if you have any question and answer sections or writing sections, I used this most recently for my listening class. And so we listened to a few audio recordings from the textbook and the vocabulary that I chose for this lesson specifically helped match what they were going to hear in the listening sections. So just adapt this to whatever textbook or activities you have. Once our work with a textbook is done, it's time to go back to speaking. And I tell the students that I want to introduce some robots to them. So that I show them a few examples of some unique and interesting robots. If you go online, you can search and find a ton of these robots, but a few that I shared were Slothbot, which travels around collecting environmental information, Atlas Rescue Robot, which rescues people, Milo, who helps students who are maybe autistic communicate and helps them with their social skills. There are robots that will cook for you. There are comedian robots. And I show them a few funny, interesting, useful examples. Then we go to our speaking practice or our speaking project. And here is where I really want students to be communicating with each other as they design their own robot. I ask students to work together in pairs or groups to design their robot and I ask them to do a few things. Number one, think of a problem that the world has or that you have and I tell them this can be something very serious. It can be life-changing or it can be kind of fun and kind of silly. Then they have to draw a picture of their robot and they have to be very specific with the robot. I want them to really communicate about this and really think through all of the details. So if they make a robot that helps you with your homework, how big is the robot? Is it human sized? Is it small so it can sit on your desk? How do you charge the robot? Is it connected to an app? so you can control it. What safety features does it have? And so I ask students to design a robot, draw a picture of it, and then think through the mechanics of the robot. How does it work? How does it function? What's the purpose of it? Students always have so much fun with this and you will get a variety of robots. I promise you that. If you want a second activity, you could have students present their robot to another group or in front of the class. And that's a really great chance for them to again practice explaining something to someone else and give them a little bit of extra speaking practice. 
If you want, you could also add in some adjective requirements. I often do this if we have recently talked about adjectives in the last few weeks, and I'll tell them that they need to write five or 10 different adjectives to describe their robot as well. Now, one super famous robot that we haven't talked about yet is Sophia the robot. For a really long time, she was cutting edge technology. And I explained to students that a lot of scientists treated her as a first type of AI and they asked her a lot of questions. So I said, we are going to talk a little bit more about the questions about AI and robots and technology, about what they think and about how powerful they are. So one question that researchers asked Sophia the robot was the trolley problem. If you're not familiar with the trolley problem, you might be once I show you a picture. Basically, the trolley problem is a picture of a trolley headed down a track. If it continues straight, it will kill five people, but there is a man with a lever. If you, the man with a lever, pull the lever, the trolley will avoid hitting those five people and it will instead go down a different path. If it goes down a different path, it will kill one person. I like this because it's very visual. Students can see the picture and understand it, but I also explain it as well. And you can turn this into a discussion question as well. You can have students communicate and share their ideas about which one they would choose. Often I find that students don't talk about this for a very long time. So if you make it a discussion question, be prepared for it to be a little bit short. Then I tell them that Sophia the robot's answer was that she would do nothing. She would not interfere and she would let the five people die. And it's just an interesting way to start talking about the ideas of robots and AI, which leads into a few more serious discussion questions. Now, if your students are really low level, they might not be able to handle all of these questions. So you can adapt them you can choose them as will fit your students. One higher level discussion question you can ask is, is there a danger of AI or robots becoming too powerful? We often see this in TV shows and movies and books, the idea that one day robots will take over, they will become smarter than us. And that can be a really interesting discussion conversation. Another question you can ask is job related. What types of jobs Jobs will AI replace? And is this a good thing or is this a bad thing? I find this is a really great way for students to practice their vocabulary when it comes to vocations. And it's a good critical thinking exercise to think about whether or not this is a good thing or a bad thing. Perhaps the jobs that they're replacing are jobs where the conditions are not ideal. Perhaps they're really physical, high labor jobs outside in the sun all day that maybe people will have a better quality of life if they're able to work at a different job. However, how does it affect the economy? How does it affect families if all of these jobs are replaced with AI or replaced with robots? One of the examples I give is when I first moved to China, if you got on a bus, there would be an attendant on the bus. You would hand the attendant your money and they would hand you a physical ticket. And we don't have that anymore. Now you just scan your bus card or you scan your phone when you en enter the bus. And students talk about the fact that those people lost their jobs. We also talked about bus drivers because yes, bus drivers still had their job. What about as we have more and more AI driven cars, taxis, planes, trains, buses? What happens then to all of those people who had those jobs? The third question you can ask is, do you think there should be laws about AI? If so, what laws? Now I tell students, I know you're not politicians. Don't worry, this does not have to be so formal, so technical. Just think about this from a practical standpoint. And most students I find are quite familiar with some of the ideas about which laws should be imposed on AI. An example I give to start the discussion is when we're talking about someone's face or their body. I give the example that, you know, what if AI takes my face and my voice and starts 
starts uploading pictures and videos online of me teaching English and they're making money off of my face, my voice, my pronunciation. So should we have laws protecting people's face, their voice, their body? AI can take someone's face and someone's body and create inappropriate images or videos of that person. Also, how do we deal with things like education? If AI is allowed, how do we make sure that students are using it properly for their homework? How do we use it for exams or papers? How do we judge if someone goes to a good college or not if their admission statement was written by AI? These are just a couple of examples that I start with to get the conversation going. The last thing I want to share is about homework. For this, usually I will ask students to answer some questions about homework. Now that's kind of ironic because they could use AI to finish the homework. Uh, of course, you could have them do an exercise in the book or something you have inside your textbook, but I really like to ask the students a few questions about AI and have them share their ideas. You could ask students to research or write about how robots or how AI is changing one specific industry. You could give them that industry or have them choose their own. For example, robots changed the medicine industry because we're now able to do surgeries using robots. Another question you could ask is, do you think AI will ever be able to feel emotion? Do you think AI will ever get to that point that it can become sentient, that it can feel emotion, that it can really have a more human-like experience? You could also ask students to share their opinion about a specific piece of technology. For example, self-driving cars are often things I see talked about in the news, and you could ask students to talk about the pros and cons or what their opinion is on self-driving cars. Would they ever ride in one? Do they think this is a positive development? What negative effects will it have? Will it affect taxi drivers' jobs and Uber drivers' positions? For all of these, you could tell the students to write five sentences, 10 sentences to answer the questions. If you want to make sure they're doing some extra practice, you could tell them to get ready to verbally share their opinions in the next class as well. And that's the end of the lesson. I hope some of these ideas will work for your classes. You can copy and paste it, like I said, or you can just mix and match, find what works for you. I find that the topic of inventions or technology is basically in every ESL textbook. So it can be nice to have a variety of ideas to choose from, and it can be fun to go at it from a different angle, like with robots and AI. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. If you have any other ideas to add, leave them, help other teachers out. You can always like the video. If you like it, that just tells YouTube that more people might like it and maybe other teachers would be able to see the video. You can always check the website atlasteaching.com for more ideas and you can check back here for new videos as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.